Hi, and welcome to Quirky Books with Katie. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 14 books of 2014. So I read over a hundred books in the year of 2014, which is crazy, but these are the books that were the creme de la creme and that I considered to be my favorites of the year. Number 14 on my list is In the Afterlight by Alexandra Bracken. This is the final book in the Darkest Mind series. This is one of my favorite series. It has something for everyone. It's kind of a mix of post-apocalyptic, dystopian, fantasy. It has some really great characters. And this was probably the darkest book in the series, but I thought that it was a very satisfying conclusion to the series, which is something that you don't often get. And I really enjoyed this book and I'm sad to see the series go but Alexandra Bracken is coming out with a new series next year so I'm excited to see where that will go. Number 13 on my list is Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins. This is the final book in the Anna and the French Kiss companion series. I've been waiting probably about two years for this book to come out and this definitely wasn't my favorite out of the three. My favorite favorite would probably be Anna and the French Kiss. I love that book so much, but this book follows a girl named Isla, and she goes to the boarding school in Paris that Anna went to, and it kind of describes her relationship with a guy named Josh. And I just thought that this was such a fun contemporary. Stephanie Perkins really is the queen of contemporary, and I really enjoyed this book. Number 12 on my list is The Demon King by Cinda William Shima. This is a fantasy series set in two points of view. The one point of view is Princess Reza and the others is a street thief lord named Han Alistair and throughout the series their paths kind of intertwine and they both have kind of have to help save the kingdom and I thought this was such a fun fantasy. It was so fun and fast-paced. I still think that the first one is my favorite in the series although this is a four book series and I think that all of the books are a lot of fun and I think this is a really good book if you're trying to get into fantasy. It's not very hard to understand and it has a lot of action and you get sucked in the story really quickly. Number 11 on my list is Cress by Marissa Meyer. This is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles series and this series kind of is a retelling of many different fairy tales. This book follows Cress who is a version of Rapunzel and I thought that this was definitely the best book in the series by far. The great thing about this series is it keeps getting better and better which is something that doesn't happen in a lot of series and I just thought that this was such a fun fast-paced story. Even though this book was over 500 pages it flew by and I really loved the characters. I loved Cress and Thorn and I loved how the characters from the other books keep getting interwoven interwoven into this story and I cannot wait to see how the series ends in winter which comes out next year. My list is Slammed by Colleen Hoover. Now Colleen Hoover is kind of known as the queen of no adult, new adult and I definitely agree with that. This book is about a girl that has to move because her father has recently passed away and in her new town she meets this guy and on their first date they go to a poetry slam but then something happens and their relationship kind of gets thrown for a loop. But I absolutely adored this book. I thought that the characters were great. The story was so emotional. The writing was fantastic and I loved the slam poetry aspect of the book. I am really interested in slam poetry so I thought that really added something and I think that if you haven't read a Colleen Hoover book yet you definitely should because every single book of hers that I've read I have loved. Number nine on my list is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. Now this book is about a kind of uncomfortable topic. It is about these two siblings that live in such horrible conditions. Their mother is never around, neither is their father, so they basically have to take care of their siblings and they are seen as adults and a bit of a romance develops between them. And I know that some people are uncomfortable with this, this book and I completely understand, but what was so special about this book is it really made me see a kind of uncomfortable topic in a really different manner and it really made me feel sorry for the characters and this was just such an emotional heartbreaking story and when I finished this book I sobbed for about an hour afterwards. This was just such a heartbreaking touching book. 
Number eight on my list is Love Letters to the Dead by Ava Delera. This book is about a girl named Laurel and her sister has recently passed away. So in class her teacher gives her an assignment to write a letter to a dead person and instead of writing to people, the conventional people like presidents, she writes to people that have di died young and tragically such as Janis Joplin and Kurt Cobain. And this was just such a beautiful story. It dealt with grief in such a touching way and it was very relatable even though I've never gone through anything like this main character has and the writing in this book was absolutely beautiful. I loved so many of the quotes and then this was just a story that really touched me. Number seven on my list is 1984 by George Orwell. This is considered to be one of the first dystopians. It is about this futuristic society where everything is controlled by the government and this man named Big Brother kind of controls everything. And I'm a really big fan of dystopians and what I loved most about this book was how creepy it was. There was a lot of different parallels between now and this future. Even though this book was written over 50 years ago, I feel like George Orwell is just a genius at kind of predicting what will be the downfall to humanity and I just love the parallels in this book and it's so creepy because you can actually see some of the things in this book happening today. Number six on my list is Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover is the only author to have two books on my list. And this is definitely my favorite book of hers that I've read. This is told from two points of view. The first point of view is a girl named Sydney, and she has recently found out that her boyfriend is cheating on her with her best friend. So she kind of has to leave their apartment and ends up moving in with this guy named Ridge, who is the other main character who lives next door. And they both really love music, and they're kind of of develop this really close friendship that kind of becomes something more but it's really complicated and messy and this book just ripped my heart out. I felt so bad for both the main characters the entire book but this was just such a beautiful book. I was crying through most of it and a lot of people consider this to be their favorite Colleen Hoover book and I do too. If you haven't read Colleen Hoover yet I can't reiterate this enough but you must read one of her books. Number five on my list is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. This book is about a girl named Lara Jean and every time she falls in love with a boy she writes him a love letter but she never sends it. She puts it in a hat box under her bed and one day all of these love letters get mysteriously sent and Lara Jean has to deal with the repercussions of this. This was by far the cutest contemporary I read all year. It was just so heartwarming and cute and it was so fun to see how Lara Jean kind of dealt with all of these love letters getting distributed and this was just such a fun cute book. If you're looking for a cute contemporary definitely check this out and the second book in this duology called P.S. I Still Love You comes out next year and I can't wait to see how this series ends. Number four on my list is Faking Normal by Courtney C. Stevens. This book is about a girl named Alexis and she has recently had a very traumatic event happen to her and this guy who used to live down the street from her named Bodie also experienced a traumatic event. Her His father actually killed his mother and is in prison so Bodie comes to live with Alexis's family and together they both kind of help heal the damage that has been done. This was just such a beautiful book. I This was one of my highly anticipated books of the year. It did not disappoint. It was just such a great book about healing and loss and I cried so many times in this book. I felt like this book was so relatable even though again I've never experienced anything to the degree of these characters. I thought it was just such an amazing beautiful book and I think that this book definitely deserves so much more hype than it's been getting. Number three on my list is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. This is actually a classic that was written in the 1940s and this book actually came in very at the end of the limit here. I read this book about a week ago and I just thought it was amazing. This book is about a girl named Francie and she is a poor girl that lives in Brooklyn with her family and this is just a story about her life and her family and I thought that this was just such a great story. Betty Smith is a great storyteller telling you all about Francie's life. I loved all of the characters. Francie's mother, her brother, and her father all became kind of like my family while reading this and I just thought this was such a good family-based classic 
and I haven't heard too much about this but I feel like this is a classic that more people should definitely read if you liked Little Women but books like that that center around family then I think you'd definitely like this book. Now any other year the number two book on my list would have been number one and that book is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. You guys have probably heard me talk about this book enough but I love this book so much. Jandy Nelson is a goddess. This book has a very kind of complicated plot summary but this book is about a pair of twins and part of the book is set from the guy's perspective when their twins are 13 and the second point of view is told from the girl Jude's perspective when they are 16 and this book is has everything. It's a, it has family, loss, dealing with sexuality, romance, just everything you could want and Jandy Nelson's writing is beautiful. There are so many quotes in this book that I just love and adore and I will read anything that Jandy Nelson writes and I think that this is definitely my favorite book of hers so far but if you haven't read her other book The Sky is Everywhere that book is fantastic as well. And the number one book on my list should be no surprise to anyone and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. You guys know how much I love this book. This is a classic from the 1800s about a woman named Jane Eyre. She has no family so after she graduates from school she goes to live with this man named Mr. Rochester to be a governess for his daughter. They end up having a relationship. It's complicated, creepy, and just amazing. If you are looking for a great gothic book or just an amazing breathtaking romance definitely check this out. This book is great if you're looking for a good feminist read romance. It has everything and I will just love this book until the end of time. So these are just a few of my favorite books of the year. Let me know in the comments down below what your guys' favorite books of the year were. Did you agree with me on any of them? So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all had an amazing reading year. I will talk to you again soon.